We pray you give me all praise, honor, and glory. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to travel grace to make it here tonight, to hear a word from you, Lord God. Father, I ask that you allow me to decrease as you increase, Lord. Let your children hear your voice and get an understanding, as your word tells us to, in all of our getting to get an understanding. Lord, we pray that the uh, those that are chimed in by way of internet will understand your word and, and, and apply it to their lives as well. Father, for everyone that may be on their way, give them traveling grace as well. Lord, we want to say we love you and we praise and magnify you. In Jesus' holy name, amen, amen. and amen. 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 So, as we know, this month, this month's study, Bible study is entitled, Breathe and Live. Breathe and live. It's kind of hard to live without breathing. Real simple, right? But however, to live has volumes behind it. To live, meaning that life has begun. The Bible tells us in Psalms that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So that means we ought to praise God with everything that with this in us. That's within us. Amen. We ought to give God all the praise, all the honor, all the glory for everything that he has given us, everything that he's allowed us to have, everything that he's provided for us. I'm talking about protection, health, strength, everything. God has given us everything that we need to live. Amen. He even gave us the greatest gift of ever, and that was his son, Jesus Christ. He said he has given his son, Jesus Christ, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Who would want to stop breathing on that? Why would you want to stop? living in the abundance of life. A lot of people measure abundance by materialistic things. But life in abundance is much more greater than that. The simplest thing that we could do is the greatest thing that we should do. And that's to breathe. Amen? Amen? For some people, you know, breathing is hard. And I'm not just talking about in the physical body. Breathing is hard. You know, even, even it manifests physically because in the spirit realm, they can't breathe because their life is being choked out by situations and circumstances. I have never had anyone to place their hands around my throat, around my neck, and squeeze to where I couldn't breathe. That's choking the life out of somebody. That's a horrible feeling. But some people walk around today with that same type of life, with their situations and circumstances choking the life out of them. They don't know how they're going to make it till tomorrow. They don't know from day to day what's going to happen. When God has a purpose and a plan for all of us. We, we know this because Jeremiah 29 11 says this. Amen. 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 Not enough people reading their word to understand it. Last week we talked about how God breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of man whom he had formed from the dust of the earth and man became a speaking spirit in some versions and a living soul in others. A human being, mankind, was birthed through the breath of God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Nothing could have happened. Nothing would have taken place for us had not God did what he did. He had in mind 
us to be as he is. It says it in Genesis, um, yes, Genesis 1 and 26. Let us make man in our likeness and in our image. Amen. And he gave us dominion over the earth. And everything that was on the earth, he gave man dominion over, power over, authority over, everything in this earth. Why is it that today we have so many powerless people? You want to answer something? Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. But as Pastor one two, um, Brown, Pastor one two, Amen, Pastor one two, and, and as you were saying, you know, especially in the, and I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it, especially in the church. <laughs> the reason that we don't have the authority, or a lot of us don't operate in the authority that we have been given, is because. Too many of us have been given religion, and religion mm -hmm. says that God does everything, and he doesn't use man for nothing. And so whatever man needs, man don't have to do anything but say praise the Lord, and God drops it in his hand. Mm -hmm. That's not the way things work. Amen. Man say has a, God has a part that he has already done, mm -hmm. and man has a part. And what God is not going to do, he's not going to do what he has told us to do. Amen. And he's not going to do what he's given us the authority to do. Amen. 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 Excellent. Thank you, sir, for that. God is not going to do what he's already done. He's not going to do what he told us to do. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing that. But so many people are still waiting for God to do something that he's already done. You missed the boat. I'm sorry. The train has left. You're standing outside with a ticket in your hand. Train is gone because you missed it. We need to get ourselves in a place. I'm talking Bible teaching, Bible preaching, Bible believing. Church. I don't care where you go. You don't have to be here. As long as you're getting somewhere that you can be taught the true word of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is real. Yes, he is. He's alive and well. Because he lives in me. Amen? Amen? The Holy Ghost that dwells within me comforts me. It leads and guides me into all truth. Yes, he what truth? The word of God. Yes, Jesus, and I explained this Sunday in the message, Jesus is the word made flesh. It was the word made flesh. Amen? Amen. So this word, the Bible, is alive in you. And, 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 and see, we know it's alive in us because when we apply it, things happen. Things happen. When you can apply it when it's in you, listen, when God breathed into the nostrils of man and man became a living being, a living soul, a, another speaking spirit, listen, things was happening. Just like that. And it's still happening today. Some things happen faster than others. Why? Because it's according to your faith. I see you, Elder. Just as the word of God says, according to your faith, let it be unto you. Jesus said that to us. Where's your faith? What is your faith doing? Do you even have faith? Well, I got some faith. I got little faith. Well, little faith. Little things happen. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. As you was talking, when Pastor was talking, I, I was thinking about the story in the Bible about the man that was just trying to get to the water that was being troubled. And come down and trouble the water. Ooh. And when the angel would come down and trouble the water and the people would get into the water, they would be healed. And it was just making me think about how with the body when it comes to breathing, how you need the oxygen 
in your body because it does something to the blood that causes you to have to live and to have power. And the same thing when you when you put this word in you and it gets it circulating through your body, it does some things to where it just <laughs> builds you up to where guess what? All of a sudden you feel with that power to where you can do what? Speak things into existence. You can Amen. speak those things that be not as though they were. You can speak healing over yourself. You can speak healing over other people. You can be that troubled water. Amen. Because he gave us the power to be able to do it. He said even greater things you should be able to do in my name. Amen. Amen. But it comes with speaking. You have a part to do. Amen. You know, it's funny because that's what Adam's part was. Before the fall, the only thing Adam had to do was speak. That was take it. Take care of everything. That was it. All the animals can Adam didn't go out searching for all the animals to name the animals. Amen. All the animals came to him. Amen. And he named them, and whatever he called it, that's what the animal was. Amen. That's when, and, 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 and we have to look at us doing our part. You know, God did his part. He sent the animals to him. And Adam did his part. He named Amen. the animals. Amen. You know, and <clears throat> the only time Adam didn't do his part is when God told him to keep the garden. <laughs> to keep it. You know what I mean? Guard it. Yes. Yes. And, and th that's, he, he made the choice not to guard it at that time. But see, people think that, oh, well, why didn't God just come down and, and stop him? Or why didn't God come out and take the, slap the fruit out of his hand? Because that's why, see, then God will be going against something else that he gave man. Mm. And what is that? Choice. Free will. Free will. He, he want mankind to, look, he want mankind not to be robots. God Amen. is not a dictator. He Amen. don't want a bunch of robots. Like in, you know, I, I was in some religions where they wanted a bunch of robots. Everybody had to be like the bishop, you know. Okay. But that's not what God wants. He He made us individual for a reason, for a purpose. Amen. 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 And so we ought to celebrate our differences because when we bring our differences together, we cover everything that's missing out there. You know, we become one. Amen. Amen. And so... We have to, just like you were saying, according to your faith, right? Let it be unto you. Let it be unto you. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And and so when you don't do your part after God has given you the authority to do it, then it's just, it ain't going to work. Why? Because it's dead. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Listen, when you don't, when you don't operate or when you don't activate your faith nothing happens, nothing happens. It's dead. nothing happens it's dead that's just like when the wind's not blowing the water doesn't move it's still it comes stagnant and stale but running water flowing running water because the wind blows it's like fresh water amen this is how our life is. When your faith is flowing, it's like fresh water running through your, through your body. Amen. Amen. Have you ever noticed that when you are at the top of your game, on, I'm talking about in your faith, you can think clearer. You can see things. You have visions. You have dreams. You have all kinds of things start to come into your mind like, wow, I can do this. I can do that. Why are you saying this? Because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That's when you know that you are working and operating in your faith because you know the word of God is working. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Christ, the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. In this word, you have power and authority. We talked about it Sunday, John uh, 15, 7. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will. It should be given unto you. But the, the key thing is you abiding in the word, and the word abiding in you. And you're using the word. You're applying the word. This is how things are happening. This is how you get what you ask for. Because you're abiding in the word by your faith. Amen? Go ahead, sir. And that's why Romans uh, 5 tells us, Romans 5 and 2, 
I'm going to start at verse 1, okay? And I'm going to read the King James Version. It says this, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Everything that we have access to is by faith. Hey. Amen. 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 And, and, you know, Hebrews talk about that, you know, by faith, the earth was framed. Amen. Everything was established through faith. By faith. By faith. Amen. We, we, if you think about the word framed, that means structured, built up. Things was put in order, put in place for success. So this is how important it is for you to have faith in God. Have faith in his word. Your faith will structure and will frame up some things that you want to come to pass. It starts with faith. It's funny because, you know, my, my profession as a construction worker, as a builder, you know, it. I, I go out to these jobs and... It doesn't start right when I get on the job and see some things happening. No, it starts right here in my heart, in my faith. I know that I, I know what I can do before I do it because I have faith that God has given me the authority. He has given me the power. He has given me the knowledge, everything that I need to get the job done. So it didn't just start when I got on the job site and seen a bunch of materials and some tools. No, it started way before that. I had a vision in my head already. That's why I can tell my clients, hey, you know what? You might want to try it this way or that way. Because I, I've already seen it in my spirit. I'm not just talking to me, y'all. I'm talking to all of us. Amen. Everything that you desire starts by faith. Let me share something with you. I'm going to go back to Exodus. Amen. Exodus 31. Amen. And I'm going to be talking about the Spirit of God. Amen. Exodus 31 and 1, and I'm going to read through verse 4. Amen. And I'm going to read the NIV version here. <laughs> I know you know like the King James, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to read this in the NIV right now. Amen. And it says this. Then the Lord said unto Moses, said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, Bezalel, right, yes, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. To make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze. And I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> because I said enough already. He filled him with the Spirit of God. And that Spirit carried all these things that was named afterwards. He was crafted. Not because he went out and saw some tools. Not because someone told him that he could do it. No, God filled him with his spirit. And his spirit had all these things that dwells within him. I thank God for his spirit that dwells within me. All of us should be thanking God for this. We have dreams. We have visions. We have talents. We have abilities. We have skills. The Bible says that, listen, your gifts will make a way for you. Oh, Jesus, y'all don't understand how good this feels, y'all. What you got to say, Sean? Come on, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, hey, y'all know I love my brother. Go ahead, a lot. <laughs> Amen. Um, as you were speaking in past, it's just, I, I love how God continues to mm. make us like him. Amen. It didn't stop with Adam. It, it continued with us, and he continues to make us like him. 
like how he speaks things over us and speaks power into us and we can speak things and speak life into our dead as Pastor was talking about that word is dead we can speak life into our situation we can Amen. speak life into ourselves speak life into other people and because he's always speaking it into us by in our dreams and by him showing us stuff and everything he says that we're more than conquerors and that we can speak those things that be not as though they were and all those things that he's been giving us the power and I just I just love how he just always continues to make us more and more like him but only once we tap into him <laughs> and learn more of him and as he said as we abide in him and him and us then that's when we learn more and more of the power that we have he said he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him mm -hmm. we have to diligently seek him amen. and learn more of him that's how we learn more of ourselves amen I think a lot of times we forget that, like in John, when it says in John 1 and 14, mm -hmm. that the word was made flesh. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the whole thing. That's the, that's the, I mean, that's like the bottom line there. Mm -hmm. The word was made flesh. The more word you get, it's the more your flesh becomes mm -hmm. it. You understand? We're the word, the more word we get, oh, yes, we, yes. see the word was made flesh. Yes, yes, the yes. The more yes. word we get, it becomes we become that. We become Amen. the word. Amen. Amen. And that's Amen. the thing. And that's that's the goal. That's how we get closer, as Elder was saying, more and more like God. Amen. That's how we get more and more like God. And I'm not talking about, you know, becoming more holy or more righteous no. because no, no, that's no, no, something no. that Jesus has already made us. Amen. And, you know, what Jesus has done is what Jesus has done. And you can't do more than what Jesus has done. All right. But bringing things to the past, speaking what's right, speaking those things that be not as though they were, mm -hmm. uh, you know, simply having the faith, just like Peter when he stepped onto the water, you know, he had he had enough faith to step on the water Amen. and walk. Amen. Whereas the rest of them, you know, and, and let's just be truthful, most of us still sit in the boat. <laughs> well, most of us still sit in the boat. We don't, don't, you don't you get out me. and step on you, the water you and walk. Me, <laughs> <laughs> and he got up and, and he walked. Amen. And that's the whole thing. And that's because he, you know, the word is he just took that word in so much mm -hmm. that it was becoming his flesh. And he wanted to be like Jesus. Amen. 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 That's all good. Amen. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for all the responses and comments and help. Amen. I love this. Uh, breathe and then live. You know, we have to apply it in order to live it. Mm -hmm. And um, when we live it, our conversation and our walk with Christ is different. Amen. Um, that's where we can, when we're out and about, because we're living it, see, we're not perfect. We still make mistakes and we still mm -hmm. learn um, different levels, but we can share it with others who's not, who's not breathing, breathing or living it. And let them know that you know it's it's okay. Come on, come on on board. Amen. You know, um, um, you're learning. You're learning. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, people are afraid to um, to take that that you know when you take a deep breath in. The sigh of relief. The sigh of relief. A lot of people are afraid to take it, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are afraid to live it because they think that. Oh, I still got something else to do. I still got something else to still do. Still got a little more dancing with the devil to do. Yeah, you know, still got a little bit more dancing with the devil to do. And you know, you know, um, I can't come up with them yet. Ooh, if they only knew. If they only knew. Yeah, it's up to Yeah. Go ahead. You know, why do we feel so energized? When we get with somebody and we start speaking the word back to oh, them and praying for one another, we oh, start speaking. Man. We become so so energized, and it's because we're breathing into one another. Amen. When God breathed into Adam, you know He breathed the breath of life. This word is the word of life. Amen. Man. Amen. And so when we speak this word to one another, what we're doing is we're breathing that word. That inspire word Amen. into one another. And that's why we get so in it. That's why it is important mm -hmm. to go to Sunday school. That's why it is important 
to go to Bible study. That's why it's important to be at the services Amen. so that you can get this word breathed into Amen. you. Amen. Because when he breathes into you, just like Adam, <laughs> you become living. living. Man. You, Amen. Amen. You get excited. Amen. You, you, get, you become, you know how the Bible says this, it, it's, the, the word is quick. The word is quick. Well, Amen. That, when it says the word is quick in the Bible, what it's saying is the word is, 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 that's what quick means. It's made alive. It's alive. Amen. 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 Raised Amen. up. Quick eating. It's quick. Amen. It's made alive. Amen. And so when we speak it or when we're under it, what's happening with us is we're getting excited. We're getting quick and we're getting made. We're being made alive. Amen. Again. Amen. The word is becoming flesh. flesh. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. And then Deacon's Carver. Amen. As as everybody was talking, it, it made me think what I said last time about how what do you what do you do? Like one of the things people always say is you get a muscle memory by you constantly doing something over and over. You're training your body to do this and to withstand this and take this to where it becomes like a, a second nature. You, you can automatically do it when it comes time to be able to do it. Like the military, they train you to do this and train you to do that mm -hmm. to where it becomes second nature where you do it. Yes, it's the same thing with this word. Mm -hmm. When you get in here and, and start applying to this word, and as Pastor was saying, and it becomes more and more of your flesh to where mm -hmm. the first thing you, you don't do anymore is you don't go default to the old guy, but you, you refer to the word. New. You allow him to do what it says and bring it back to your remembrance to where when the enemy comes, it becomes second nature that all of a sudden the first thing you do is you hit him with the word. Amen. And, and when a situation arises, you automatically breathe life into it to where into your victory. You don't breathe life into the de defeat. You breathe life into the victory. You sow seed into the victory and you don't sow it no more into the doubt and no more into the defeat and already beating yourself before it even comes. You know how people like when they race, they be like, oh man, I haven't seen them. They fast. I don't know if I, you know, I already beat yourself. They already defeated. You know, well, same thing with boxing. Oh man, I haven't seen them. For, oh man, I don't know. You know, I already beat yourself. <laughs> to where instead of you, you can be like, you know what? Like David, when he, he saw uh, Goliath, he was like, man, man, what are y'all doing now? We can take him. Exactly. What are y'all sitting back here being weak, man? Do you know the power that my God has given me? The power that he's given us? Glory, hallelujah. That's what we have to do. Do you know the power that my God, you got to speak to the enemy into the situation. Do you not know the power that my God has given me mm -hmm. to defeat you? you no. Know. <laughs> Try again. As, as people had t-shirts and stuff. And uh, and as a uh, as well, not, not today, say. Not today, say. <laughs> the devil is a lie. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Deacon Carter. <laughs> this is good. It's like tag team. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I love it to piggyback off the uh, pastor and Elder Locke. You know, when you um, when you live in it and you apply it to your life, which is the word, and how a pastor said it, it's like you you get excited. That's right. You know, you get like 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 you got ADHD or you're just so excited, you know, a piece of candy or something that you want to share. For real. For real. Because you, you, you want to share it, how God the good has, news. the good news, yeah. how God is treating the you. The good news. You know, and, and to share it with them. Because again, a lot of people are being blindsided. Mm -hmm. They don't know. How can they? It's like blind leading the blind on their behalf. Mm -hmm. But because um, someone who is knowledge of the word is bringing a light to them. Amen. So now they can get excited. So now they can have that overflowing, like a like you about to drink some coffee in the morning. You know, <laughs> get excited. <laughs> and <laughs> but you know, she for real, y'all. <laughs> yeah. But when you have that exciting, then that's when you have that personal relationship with God. Amen. Because I'm breathing it. Because I'm living it. And because I can, um, me and my Heavenly Father has that personal relationship, oh, yeah. I can say, it's Gwen, Gwen again. He is. know it's Gwen because I created you, you. And, you know, and when I'm explaining to something to someone, because I'm breathing and leaving, I'm like, you know, me and God school like that. <laughs> <laughs> but Amen. For someone who's not on that level, they're afraid to say it. I'm still being respectful. Mm -hmm. But me and you. I'm being me, because God is accepting Gwen, and I can say, 
We cool like that because we are cool like that. Amen. Amen. I see you. Go ahead, Pastor, and then think about it. In, 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 in what makes the difference notice what is, is the living word so when it comes in as we're saying it's the gospel yes. so it's the good news Yes. and all of us have been in a place where it wasn't so much the good news was being shared with us <laughs> when you're in a place and all they sharing is, is fire and, and, brimstone. and brimstone hell and brimstone <laughs> that's not good news <laughs> and so you're not excited about that share. And then, you know, you can't, you're not excited about it. You can't understand what's going on because, you know, a lot of people want to teach, you know, they want to preach from Revelation. You don't need to be preaching from Revelation. You know what I'm saying? You don't need Amen. To be, Amen. Oh, with the pride and with the seven heads and the, and the you know what I mean? You, and people are like, oh, no, and they scared. And, you know, I, I, I can remember going to uh, taking, we went to, what was it, Hell's Gate? Uh, it was a play. Heaven's Gate, Hell's Flames, something mm. like that. And everybody was going, and, you know, people were seeing a play, and it was it was a good play. You know, it was all about, you know, the angels and, and the devil. And, yeah. and the thing about it was, people were trying to, they basically were trying to get their names wrote in the Lamb's Book of Life. Mm. And if their name wasn't in there, they were going to hell. And so it, it, it was a play to basically scare you into accepting, you know, Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. But see, that's using fear. And God, does. and God does not give us the spirit, the spirit of, of fear. fear. Mm -hmm. You know, when me and First Lady uh, started dating, she didn't date me because she was afraid of me. I surely didn't date her because I was afraid of her. <laughs> he's you know? big. He's big. <laughs> He's bullying me. This is her. She's bullying me. Y'all know who she is. Hey, hey, hey. Right. say no more. <laughs> First lady at the church, but boy. I got the makeup on y'all. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, God wants us to come to him out of love. Amen. Amen. Because that's a part of the good news. That's it. Amen. And so we have to get an understanding of this word. So to be in a place where they're speaking over your head and they're telling you in order for you to get to have the spirit of God and or in order for you to, to, to uh, grow or to become like God, you have to do certain things. You know, if, it, if it's anything more than believe, then there's a problem. Amen. <laughs> Amen. There's a problem. I know. I was in places where I could not have the Spirit of God unless I spoke in tongues. That's what they said. Yeah. Now, I thank God I can speak in tongues. This is, this is a gift that I have. But it wasn't because of but that. But it wasn't because of that. Amen. You know, because by doing it that way, what it was saying was the gift of tongues gave me the Spirit of God. And that's, and that's not so. Because the gift doesn't give the Spirit. The Spirit gives the gift. Amen. And the Bible says the Spirit gives the gift to whom he chooses to have that gift. Amen. Now, if you want it, you can desire it. You can ask for it. Amen. Everybody can have it. Amen? Amen. But he gives it to who he, and that's why he said desire the best gift. Well, what gift is the best gift? The best gift is, is the gift one that's needed. needed at that time. Amen. 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 The one that's needed at that time is the best gift. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Duncan. Yeah, this is good. I'm piggybacking off of Deacon Ms. Carter and others when you say, you know, when you talk to somebody and you give them the word of God, and then you see them turn around and start giving other people the word of God. Mm. I had a cousin last night. I called him, congratulated him, became a deacon. Amen. Amen. I've been talking to him, talking to him while I was in the lake before I came here. Mm hmm and man, I just had to congratulate him last night. And like Pastor said, man, man, I, I start standing up in the bedroom. My wife would come out looking because I was getting loud. You listen to something about when you get to talking about Jesus, you get excited. And my wife thought I was crazy because I was getting excited up in there. We start asking gospel among each other. Man, it's just something good to see when you share the gospel with somebody who don't know and then all of a sudden, they start knowing. Amen. They start developing their own relationship. Amen. 
Amen. Like what you have. Awesome. And it's just awesome. Amen. It's just awesome to see. Yes, it it's is. It's awesome to be a part of. Amen. 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 You know, it's very important for us to let everyone that we come across see that Jesus in us. It is so important. You might be the only Bible that they would ever see. Your life, if, if you're living this word, if you're living according to the word of God, you are sharing the word of God through your walk, through your talk. Amen? Amen. People listen whether you believe it or not. They hear everything that you say. Whether they believe it or not, or whether they agree with it or not, they hear you. It is better to give them the true word of God than to lie to them by giving them your opinions. Your opinion means nothing. It's a shame that God has brought you through so many things in your life. Listen to what I'm saying. God has brought you through so many things in your life, but yet you won't give him the glory. You'll give someone your opinion of how you think you made it through. Oh, I did this on my own. Pull myself up by my bootstraps. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm going to share something with you all today. It happened to me today. It was great, awesome time. I was on a job, and my client came out and wasn't, you know, wasn't up to par. A little down, a little sad. And uh, I said, how was your day? You don't want to know. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. She said, I don't even know where to begin. I said, you're all right. I said, you're just fine. I said, I don't care what it is. You're fine. You're still breathing. You're fine. So she began to explain to me what was going on. Her father only had maybe hours to live. I said, it's okay. I said, listen, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not going to do anything other than encourage and uplift you. By this time, her sister came out, her cousin, and her uncle came out. They were in the backyard. And then her husband came with some bottles for water for us and had an opportunity to minister to all of them concerning her father. And I thank God for his word being in me. And as Elder was saying earlier, the pastor was saying earlier, the best gift that you can desire is the gift that is needed. They needed some comfort. They needed some word that was going to uplift their spirits and understand that her father is just fine. Whether he's here or there, he's just fine. Amen. Let's read it. Yes, sir. Honestly, you just gave us the scripture here in Exodus 31, 1 through 5. It said, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God. And, okay, now he filled him with the Spirit of God. So, what gift is now needed? Amen. Okay, well, I filled him with skills, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crowns. So what gift was the best <laughs> gift at that time? There was this gift, Amen. gift so that they can build the tabernacle. Amen. They can go ahead and get just like just like Noah. Noah had Noah had, uh, uh, was was filled with God to build the, the what, ark. The ark. Amen. That was the best gift because if you didn't have a gift to build an ark, then everybody died. Come on now. Everybody died. We wouldn't even be here. <laughs> no, nobody. Would we be wouldn't here. be here. So you know people. Always talking about the best gift is this and the best gift is that. No, the best gift that when the Bible says desire the best gift, the Amen. best gift is always the one that is needed at that moment. Amen. 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 And I thank God, like I said, you know, for his gift that he's given me. That he's given us all. Mm -hmm. Because all of us at some point in time came across somebody that we had to encourage and uplift. You didn't just get that on your own. <laughs> no. Amen. This is something that God poured over into you. He trusted you with this. Trusted that you would give it to someone else and not hoard it for yourself. God never hoarded anything from us. 
Amen, brother. He says in his word that, listen, he would not withhold any good thing from us. That's what he said. So why would we do it to anybody? I tell you this. I, I thank God for the, his compel, the, the spirit within me being, it compels me to want to help and encourage somebody. I don't care how I'm feeling. It's funny that I don't even care. I don't think about how I'm feeling at the time when I have to comfort or uplift someone else. I see you. My body can be aching. I, I can have all kinds of problems going on. But when someone is in need, God says, hey, <laughs> I need you. Let me feel you. Amen. Let me feel you. <laughs> Amen. God said, you feel me? <laughs> Amen. I feel you, Lord. Amen. Hey, he strengthened me that I can strengthen someone else. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. As she was talking, it just made me think of, you know, how people have the saying that goes around to pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? Or were you doing something good for somebody else or whatever? And you got to realize when you're a child of God, you do that every day. At least you're supposed to. Amen. You're paying for it because you're doing something good for somebody. And you even can go above and beyond and pray it forward. Because prayer always gets there quicker than anybody or anything else can. And and as Pastor said, that may be what's the best thing that is even needed than something tangible or whatever. It might be prayer that is needed, most thing that is needed. And you can always pray for someone before you can even get there. Amen. You can always, as you said, encourage somebody, uplift somebody. It doesn't always have to be uh, monetary, giving somebody money or something. It could be giving somebody a smile, somebody a hug, an encouraging word, a, a moment of prayer. And so it, it's always at the time of what is needed. As Pastor was just saying, it's what is needed. Amen. And it is breathing life into the victory because you're breathing life into the victory, not the defeat. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Did, did you hear what he said? Breathe life into the victory. Always be positive. Always encourage. Don't discourage. Amen. Amen. Speak positive, not negative. Always be ready, willing to lift someone up, not tear them down. Amen. Don't you know that the, the, the worst and the latter of the good is always easiest to do? It's, it's easy to speak negative. It's easy to, to tear somebody down. It's easy to, you know, just give up. It takes work to stand up. It takes work to lift someone up. But God has given you that power. He has breathed life into you. You couldn't praise God without breath. I like to see somebody try that. I like to see somebody try that. Stop breathing. Stop breathing. And I ain't talking about just for a couple seconds because some people hold their breath for like three minutes, four minutes. That don't work. You're cheating. <laughs> Stop breathing for good and see if you can praise God. Stop breathing for good and see if anything will happen for you. <laughs> with everything, I see you, sir. With everything in you, you ought to give God praise and honor. With everything in you, you ought to be doing everything to the glory of God. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. And I see you, Angel, next. Okay. You need your mic, please. <laughs> Amen. I miss you, Angel. Good to see you. Test him. Test him. Amen. Hello. 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 All right. Uh, oh, you can talk through the mask. Are you getting a little worship? <laughs> I got to say you swear. Uh, I thank God for this. Um, Amen. Just thinking about it, you know, how you said we use our gifts. And I, a lot of the times, and I, you know, noticing it now, to me it was just regular conversations or it was just, you know, something that I did. But I just thank God for the gift that he has given me as a teacher for kids and to talk to their parents. Praise God. Uh, whether it be 
whether it be music or not even just sports. Uh, for example, uh, as I do private lessons, I teach private lessons to middle school kids. So this is the first time they've ever played like anything percussion or they're just now starting. So they're brand new to this. And the one thing that I thank God for is the fact that I don't teach how my teachers taught me because how my teachers taught me was through fear and was through anger and was through hurt. <laughs> and so, so a lot of the teachers that I was listening to with either, either A say, if you don't do this, you're gonna work at Walmart for the rest of your life. If you don't do this, you're gonna work at McDonald's for the rest of your life. You might as well quit. You might as well stop. And so that's, and I just thank God that like, learning from that, God has given me the path to go and say, no, you can do this. Don't worry about it. That's right. You may be here, but we're going to get you here. That's all that matters. We're going to get you from there. We're going to get you from there. And the feedback just from God having these parents tell me, my, my kids love it. All they do is talk about it. That's all Amen. they do is talk about Amen. it. Amen. And, you know, Amen. I, I, I tell them, you know, that's all, it's all through God. You know, I thank, I thank God for everything just Amen. to give me that job. And even one where... I was at my fiance's church because, you know, she has a church over there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, they asked me if I could help with their little sports thing. I said, okay, sure. They said, we just want you to go and write down, you know, things. It was basketball, how many hoops the kids can shoot, stuff like that. And knowing me, I'm into sports. I said, all right, I'm going to push these kids just as much to get <laughs> everything out of them. Amen. And, you know, some kids came in, you know, all Moby, and the parents were like, you know, whatever. And at the end, they're all sitting there going, yeah, let's go, let's go. And, I'm, and, I'm the, and the funny thing is, I'm the only one in that gym going, come on, come on, you got 10 seconds, come on, you can shoot, you can shoot it. Hey, man. Come on, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. And I'm just sitting there the whole entire time. And, you know, think about now, I just, I just thank God that he's giving me that energy and that, that momentum to just push kids to be their best, to push kids to do what they want to do. Yes, they may come in, Moby, but I just thank God that he's given me the ability to just keep pushing them. And just Amen. you know, think about us using our gifts. It just, it just, bing, you know, we don't, we don't think about it. We don't think about the conversations we have. And another testimony, I, I, I talk about it all the time. Every time, some, especially someone says, "You have a nice car," I said, "You know, all, I, all I got to do is thank God." I Amen. said, "I thank God." That's the first thing. That's the first thing I say. I said, "No matter what," I said, "I went through a lot, and I was patient and I was obedient." I said, and God has blessed me with a car that has not broke down ever since I got it and has Amen. not had a, a single Amen. problem. Amen. I said, I will give God the praise no matter what. I even told my fiance, we're in the car, and I sit in the car, and I'm driving, and I say, look at God. And she's like, <laughs> and she's like what? I say, like, where, where? I was where, like, where, look at this. We're sitting in the car. <laughs> I, was like, right. I was like, you know, I said, Laura, I said, God has blessed me with this car to be able to go from point A to point B to get to where I am today. And Amen. I said, I just thank God. And I said, I thank God for the fact that I went to the church that I go to now as a little kid. And I tell her all the time, I said, I thank God for this church because I wouldn't be the man that I am today. Amen. I wouldn't be the person that I am today. And I said, I just thank God that we were able to get here and from meeting Miss Wilson and all that, all that jazz and meeting this car. <laughs> yeah, that was embarrassing. <laughs> But, but you know, it's, you it's just one of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We worked it out. We worked it out. We, we found you in the Bible. <laughs> but, but it's all through the grace of God. Just, it's just one of those things that, like, you don't think God, but God has brought you all the way through. You made that's that's all it is. Yes. So that's all I say. You know, again, we're so proud of you, Angel. I want you to know that Amen. we're very proud of you. And and, and know Amen. know this. You are operating in the ministry. Those you know, teachers mm -hmm. are part of the Bible ministry. Yep. You are needed. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thank God that you 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 you're walking in your calling. Amen. Continue to do what you do. Continue to let God use you. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. I remember that. Yeah. You almost forgot. As, as she was talking, it just it just made me think. It's like um religion to sit there and try to say that you can you can see and look and tell who is the Christian and, and who isn't and stuff and on the outer but I love how God is because the word says you know by the fruit that you bear mm -hmm. and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks amen that is how that's one of the ways you can tell you can sit two people in a room <laughs> the one that's going to speak life encourage and build up that's the one that has a true relationship. 
the one that's gonna speak negative and talking down and judging and 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 giving religious answers all that that's the one no they don't have the true relationship mm. but with god you're known by the fruit that you bear amen because like i said always if you just sit back and listen you can tell a lot about people by just letting them speak because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so you can tell what they're being filled with amen amen you know we all have a mission we all have a mission we were birthed for this purpose, this reason. And that is to go out and spread the good news, the gospel. God commissioned us to do this. Now understand this. He ain't going to make you do nothing. He's not going to make you do anything. You don't have to go out and tell nobody nothing about God. Because if you don't, somebody else will. And woe be unto you to hoard God's word to yourself. You'll go all the way to the grave with just what you know. That's okay. I find great pleasure in spreading God's word. I find great pleasure because when I spread his word, I know that the love of God is coming out of me. His love. <laughs> The love of God is what's dwelling in us when we are in his word, when we are really digging down deep, letting the for greater is he that is in me than me that is in the world come out. You're showing God's love. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to get, I don't want anybody to get down on themselves and think because you don't have the gift of gab like Oh, no, that, you're right. <laughs> All right, Elder Carter has a gift of gab when he can go in the place and light it on fire. And it makes a way for me. He walked away. You know, he walked into a place. That's why I don't go to Lowe's unless I got him with me. I know I'm going to get him there. Let me take my voucher with me. Come on, Troy. But, you know, it's a gift, and that's the whole thing. You know, you may... you. Again, he says that your life may be the only Bible that somebody sees. Amen. Amen. You know, how are you living? Do you, are you standing on faith? When you say, hey, when you see everybody around you panicking, you're not, you're calm, because you're standing on faith. And people are looking at you, and you know, you may not be preaching or anything, but they're looking at you like, man, what's up? why ain't you all worried about it? <laughs> so you know what? Because I know the Lord got me. Amen. Now you 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 spreading the good news. Amen. You know you spreading Amen. the good news. It, it don't. And so you just keep being who God has made you. Believe me, Amen. when that door opens for you to, to, to squeeze the word in there, hey. you'll get it in there. Amen. 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 He's gonna make. He's gonna. He gonna <laughs> oh, it's gonna get it. He's gonna it. get it. He's gonna take the conversation. It's gonna get it. That's how they you. do it. So bless the Lord. It's a gift. It's Amen. a gift. Amen. Amen. And everybody has a gift. And, and so I'm just saying, don't down yourself if you don't have the gift of God like him. No, by no right? means, don't do that. Please <laughs> by don't no do means, that. just understand what he's saying by, hey, you know, the opportunity comes. When the opportunity comes, don't back off like, you know, well, you know, I don't want people to think I'm on those holy rollers or I don't want nobody to think I'm a Jesus freak or I don't want people knowing I go to church or, no, no. Hey, be who God has made you to be. Spread this good news. Amen. 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 Wait, Angel. I'm going to make it quick. Uh, <laughs> so, before I forget, the first thing that, that I really like was what Pastor said was, you know, everybody's freaking out. And, you know, you know you, how you walk by faith and you trust in God is when you just calm. Mm -hmm. It's like this whole COVID thing. Everybody's like, what's wrong? What's, you know, this is wrong. This is wrong. So, I'm, everything's saying we. I was like, I, I go to work. I, I practice. I eat. I sleep. They do homework. And they're like, that's it. I'm like, yeah, that, I'm having a normal day, you know? And and I just, I love that. I think it's great. Amen. Uh, and another thing that you had said that was that, you know, people listen. God is contagious. I just, Ooh, and it's, it, it's true. Because when I was at TJC, I would always say, I would always sing the song, bless the Lord, all my soul and all. That's within me to bless his name. You know, and I would just say that that you part. A little bit. Uh, and so I, I would just sing that part and that was it. 
And it got, and I would just rent, I would do it every time something good happened, whether it, or something bad. I was like, you know, it don't matter. I so said, I will bless God. And I would say that part, and it, I said it so much, and I didn't think people would listen, but I'd just say it randomly, that when I would sing it, people would join in. <laughs> and then they would start singing it. And next thing you know, we start talking about God, and we start singing the song, and we all we all full of musicians. So you got someone playing on the piano, actually playing the song, and we actually singing the song. Oh man, that's you know, cool. You know, people listen, and God's contagious. God just boom, Amen. He shows up, He shows out every time. So, Amen. Yeah, I just want to say that. I just remember that. that, that that's awesome, though, Angel. That is really awesome. You know, how good is it? I mean, who? It just does something to your soul when you can. Be the light mm -hmm. that God called you to be. You know, like you said, it, there was something that you did because you were giving God praise. Mm -hmm. You know, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's what it means. Spread the good news. And here it is now. You got, you know, a whole choir behind you. You know, musicians and all. Well, praise God. Continue, continue to let God work in you. You got two minutes, dude. You got two minutes. Hold the lock. Twenty-two seconds. Hey man, just, just real quick. When uh, Angel got to talking, um, it reminded me. And when you was talking, just Sunday, when you preach, what's in you? Mm -hmm. When I left, and uh, I stopped by the gas station to grab a drink, it's just something small. And so uh, I went to go to pay for it. And the uh, woman behind the register, she was like, Merry Christmas. I was like, uh, oh, well, uh, I'm about to, she was like, uh, Merry Christmas. I was like, oh, what's up? She was like, did you go to church today? I was like, I'm just leaving there from now. Amen. I was like, well, bless the Lord. And it was Amen. like, wow, what's in you? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, when you have God in you, it has no room but to exude them out of you. Like I said, spirit recognized spirit. There's just something small. And, I was just like, wow. I said, okay, well, bless the Lord. Amen. That's the first thing I said. So she said, Merry Christmas. I was like, well, bless the Lord. Amen. I was like, Merry Christmas back to you. And she was like, you to I sure did. Amen. 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 As Pastor was saying, every opportunity you get, just squeeze the word. Squeeze Jesus in there. And I guarantee you, after a while, you're going to have to squeeze too much more because it's going to open up. Amen. The door will open up. You know how it is when 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 somebody are peeping in, in into a room on a conversation, but they don't want nobody to know that they're there. Well, I don't know if I should step in here because they talking about things in the world. They talking about this. They talking about that. And I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to go in there. You know. No. Kick that door open. Get in there. Get in there. It was look just like the song said. Get in there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's how both. See that? See that? See that? Y'all, come on now. Some of us got this. The, see, some of us got this thing. You know, that's the way you want to do. You kick that door in, get in there. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is in the house, y'all, and He is full of life. And all those that believe in Him, all those that have faith in Him, is full of life. Yeah. To the full. I'm talking about. Listen, I am overflowing. With life. I cannot contain this all of my own. I have to give it to somebody. So I need to speak life into everyone that I come across. And I pray that we all do the same as the deacons are coming. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do y'all learn something tonight? 